So I used to be the type of guy that would have six eggs and bacon and a couple of pieces of toast and banana, but that was it. So it was just a small portion of oats. So we can roll our eyes at porridge or whatever you want to call it over and over again. Simon of the Board Ahole here. Thank you very much for joining me as always on a lovely Friday if you're watching this on the first day it goes live. And today we're taking two of my favorite things, professional wrestling and fitness, and we're mushing them together in a glorious gym pie. Because if you are into professional wrestling and all elite wrestling, you will have seen over the last few months, Chris Jericho went from this to this. And as the article states, it was so crazy. You had some crazy people on Twitter going, oh, he must have got ab implants. Like at the age of 51, 52, whatever he is, Chris Jericho, who has been a millionaire for a long as time, decided, oh, today I shall get ab implants and nobody's going to notice. Everybody is going to notice. Now, he did a podcast about this. Um, one of the reasons he did decide to lose weight because he had a health scare. Again, I'm not going to get into it. You can go and check it out. But he did get into some details during that and essentially said, you know, he went to get Checked out by a doctor after he had all this stuff and his visceral fat was too high and he was overweight on the BMI index, of course, or the BMI. Not massively. I mean, the BMI is a good way as a very, very rough tool. We've done videos on it before, but a lot of people are going to have a terrible BMI because they're actually holding a lot of muscle. But he was aware that it wasn't good for him. And again, now that his health was directly affected, he needed to make the change. And my word... Did he smash it? Now, he did this article with GQ, which was interesting. Because again, they talk about his career and they talk about all the problems that he did go through. And it's, you should really check out the story because it's kind of harrowing and kind of, again, this probably would have happened to him regardless. It just feels like one of those things. But it does tie into the fact that if you do have a healthier lifestyle, not that he was being unhealthy, but he was drinking a lot, etc., that you can put yourself in a better position for all of life, you know, not just the stuff in the gym. So he went to a weight loss clinic that opened up uh, around where he lived called Options, and he decided to go for that one. And it's incredible because all it is is calories in versus calories out, right? That's all it is. And it goes to show it doesn't matter who you are, what your age is, how long you've been training for, how athletic you are, all of these things Chris Jericho fits. As long as you are not over consuming, you will lose weight. Now, he says here that uh, he wanted to lose 10 pounds over six weeks. On this diet, he lost 11 pounds in the first week. Now, I'm not going to recommend that to everybody, but I suppose if you are drinking a lot of alcohol and you cut alcohol out and you reduce your calories, there's every chance that you would go through this kind of crazy shift. But remember, that is the exception, not the norm. You do not want to be doing that every week because bad things will happen. So when we do get to the question about the diet, he said the diet consists of just very small snacks, all infused with proteins and nutrients, and then a bunch of supplements. So he says he takes fat burn and potassium and vitamins. We've talked about fat burners here before. Do you need them to lose weight? No. But can they be helpful if you pick the right one? Yes. No one has ever said, despite what the internet and Twitter likes to think, no one has ever said they're absolute gubbins. I mean, some are. You need to do your research. But in terms of the chemistry behind them, some of them will actually help you lose weight. But what most people do is they assume a fat burner is just going to take care of all their fat. No, you still need to be doing the work. You always need to be doing the work. He, he started this and he remembers the first day when the trainer, whoever, said, okay, here's your first meal. And surprise, surprise, it was just a little package of oatmeal. And I was like, well, what else? Because I used to be the type of guy that would have six eggs and bacon and a couple of pieces of toast and banana. But that was it. So it was just a small portion of oats. So we can roll our eyes at porridge or whatever you want to call it over and over again. But <laughs> there's a reason people go back to that. And don't forget that oats are good for cholesterol, which ties into health as well. So he continues. But here's the key. You keep eating all day. He then craps over intermittent fasting, which made me laugh. I used to do intermittent fasting, which to me is the biggest scam. It doesn't work. Like I'm not eating all day, but when, but then when I eat, I can have whatever I want. Doesn't work that way. Now, that sounds a bit like intermittent fasting mixed with if it fits your macros. I know a lot of people that do intermittent fasting and they're still eating, well, they do eat relatively large portions, but they keep it clean. They just don't eat for certain periods throughout the day. I mean, I don't know. He hasn't documented it here, but I actually agree with him. I don't think it's a scam because I know plenty of people that have benefited from it, but I don't like intermittent fasting. It's just not for me. I tried it, it didn't work. And what I do like is this though, you have to keep eating constantly throughout the day. That's what I like. I like looking forward to my next meal. So you have that little pack of oatmeal and then just as you're starting to get ravenous, like two and a half, three hours later, you get a little chocolate bar or a bag of chips or a cup of soup. Now in my diet, I'm eating a chocolate bar, bag of chips, a cup of soup, no. But this is exactly what we're talking about all the time. It's so boring, but it's true. You can have a chocolate bar, you can have your soup, you can have a bag of chips or crisps if you're English in the UK. As long as you are burning more calories or as long as you are eating under your maintenance that you just need to survive and live, you'll get away with it. Now, the problem I would have with this is if, <laughs> if I had one bar of chocolate, I want 92. That's why I try and stick to foods that are 
you know, considered healthy, clean, whatever you ever want to call it. But he goes on, you might get a chocolate shake, but it's not a big protein shake like your U2. It's this wee little box. So once again, he's probably just drinking low calorie protein shakes as opposed from the mega gainers. That I know some people still love. I don't like them at all. And then once a day, you would get eight ounces of protein with a salad. So you could have a couple of turkey burgers or four eggs or whatever. You strive throughout the day to make it to your big meal and big meal is eight ounces. And then you'd have one or two more snacks later. And that would be it like any other diet because I've been on a few of them. Once you get into the hang of it it's really not so bad which is the other thing which is what i like to tell a lot of people that i chat to fitness about routine is everything consistency is everything and after a while you're not craving the sweets and you're not craving the cheese and the pizza because you're just getting on and you're enjoying the healthy lifestyle because you're feeling the benefits emotionally you're feeling the benefits physically and obviously you can see that you're in better shape which becomes well it becomes a great motivator he then continues and he just makes my day because he says another thing was drinking at least 100 ounces of water a day i was never much of a water drinker but now i'm pounding the water i'll drink 34 ounces you just got to retrain your body ding ding and once you're able to do that it isn't so bad i can still have a drink so again in moderation he's still getting his alcohol in there i have my little shot glass for a little vodka and it's fine so it was just a lifestyle switch and when you get to that first way and you're like hold on i can't believe it when you see the results that's all you need i just said this that's what really hooked me to this day i'm the guy that carries the scales with me everywhere if i'm over 210 i pull back if it's under 210 well then i have a cheeseburger if it's 205 then i have a cheeseburger and a pizza if it's 215 then i'll be strict on my diet for a couple of days and once you get there and maintain it it's okay you just have to know where you're at now that doesn't mean that you have to start carrying scales around the place but that's a great way to do it and don't forget there's a lot of barometers one is your weight one is how you look in the mirror you could measure your muscles if you're worried about losing muscle mass etc and just your overall cardiovascular health and how you feel you should put all of these apart shake them up and see what comes out the other side but that's not a bad way to do it and the proof is in the pudding it may not work for you but quite clearly it's working for chris jericho he then gets asked about sort of how restrictive he is with things of course he mentioned eating cheeseburgers and pizza and he says the first couple of months i was super enveloped with it but we're human beings you know what i mean you can't flubbing live like that forever also something we talk about cheat meal treat meals understanding that sometimes you will be caught short and you could eat whatever you want it's not going to kill you the beginning was like going cold turkey almost no pun intended because i would have loved some cold turkey at the time but you really have to focus and i'm still very motivated once you get me into something you can't get me out of it i still keep a scale with me to measure the ounces of meat because if it says do eight i'm doing eight i'm not doing 8.5 or 7 whatever that's it and those are the scales that i would take around with me you can take away scales to weigh yourself too but no matter where i go i take my weighing scales i mean they're tiny they are probably double the size of this phone which is super duper small you can always get them in your bag and then you can just weigh your food. Because remember, if you weigh your food, you know where you've been and you know where you're going and you know what changes you may have to make. I think it's important to mention the uh, reaction or how he felt to the reaction because people did go crazy over this. And they said, how did that massive reaction feel when people saw the transformation? It felt great, man. It really did. You know, my matches never suffered, but I could feel the difference. Imagine having a wrestling match or boxing or riding your bike with a 30 pound weight belt wrapped around you. Then you take it off and all of a sudden it's like, holy shib. It was a whole new thing. And listen, I've got pretty thick skin, but it was kind of a drag when you read oh jericho's fat and all this stuff people are pretty cool but here's the best part when i lost that weight there was no like oh wow jericho's not fat it was like oh he went and got ab implants that's what he did you should always remember that too don't call people fat why do you need to call people fat if you think someone is fat just keep it to yourself he then goes on to talk about ab implants and saying that um you know doesn't even know if they're real and of course then people said that he went on steroids i mean you can quite clearly tell that chris jericho is not on steroids and i mean that in a good way but he says i guess it's a huge compliment that everyone thought i was all gassed up and had ab implants right you must have done something good meanwhile all it was was eating a wee little bit of flubbing chocolate bar about this big he does that with his fingers if you needed a stack right now and i gave you then one of those you'd be like what i need four that's my problem, Chris. That's my problem. He also talks about what he's doing for training. So I got super into this. And look, he is 52 years old. So you do have to take that into account, even though he doesn't look it. And they say, what does your training regimen look like these days? And he says, my weightlifting is pretty much non-existent. There you go. Even before the embolism, which is the uh, the illness, the disease, whatever you want to call it, he suffered the health concern, I should say. I've been kickboxing and I really enjoy it. When I was in my 20s, it was all about the power aspect. How much can I bench? How big can I get? Then when your body gets older, you hear about guys tearing tendons and ligaments and pecs and all that sort of stuff. I always loved weightlifting. What I really loved about training was that feeling of having a great workout. That morphed into yoga. Do yoga regardless. It's so good for you. And then I was really into bike riding, but kickboxing is my main outlet 
now. When you kick boxing, I think my arms and shoulders are more defined than they ever have been. My legs as well. When I'm home, I'll do at least three kickboxing sections a week. I've got a great trainer who comes to my house right before the pandemic. I converted my garage into a gym. All the machines are set in a circle. Right in the middle is where I kickbox. And if I want to work out, I can do that too. It's really transformed my physical training. I know I say this all the time, but it's important to say it once more and probably a thousand times in the future. Pick what you want to do. Kickboxing, boxing, MMA, wrestling, weight training. All of these are good. Just find a way to stimulate your body. And if you enjoy it, you've won. He also mentions that he kind of gets lots of cardio, obviously doing wrestling and playing with Fozzie, which you would do if you've ever performed on stage. You know, that's kind of crazy. And um, he does talk about sort of an average meal day. And he says, my meal prep is seven envelopes of oatmeal. Well, that's, that's, that's obviously a week, I would imagine. 14 bars of chocolate, seven bags of chips and seven shakes. That's my food plus one meal a day, which might be a cob salad or some scrambled eggs. Or like I say, a cheeseburger because I do have to enjoy myself. This is an interesting one too. My drinking has gone down. I still love to drink. I drink vodka and it's great. But now I know there's 65 cows and a shot of vodka. I'm that guy now. I'll still enjoy it. But I also don't need to have a whole bottle on my rider every night. He also does mention that he had a cheat meal for his wife's birthday. And then obviously, I think a lot of it would have been water weight anyway. But he went up to 218. So he just went crazy strict with his diet for a week. And he was back to 209. And don't forget, that's how it works. You're allowed to have a blowout as long as you go back to the consistency, as we've already talked about. And he goes on to say that people like Taz and the company are doing the same thing. So again, doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter what your approach has been, always just accept your surroundings as you find them and know that you can do this. And again, Chris Jericho is 51, 52 years old, maybe 50, I can't remember, but he's over 50 and he was able to do it. So hopefully you can use it too to get inspired and remember, eat little and often, and nine times out of 10, that's gonna work. Now, please do let me know what you think about this in the comments below. I think it is genuinely awesome. When Chris Jericho first came out on that dynamite, I was like, flub, yeah, because I love this kind of stuff. Also, like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Click the bell, ding, ding, so you know other videos are going live. There will be a video on the screen. Please do give it a click. Otherwise, go to mine.com for the summary because I'm going to get 10% off. I believe they do fat burners too. I'll admit to you, I haven't used them, but I trust that company, so I'm happy to pimp them out. Add Simon316 on Instagram and Twitter, patreon.com for the summary 316 I'm on Cameo. I've got merchandise. Again, it's all in the description down there. Otherwise, thank you very much for joining me as always. See you soon.